My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. All helps my channel and the dogs that I'm be rescuing in the future. So it has no value to you, but it has great value to me. So uh, you know, I wanted to touch on obviously the coin market cap, 180 billion right now. It's gone up. Obviously, Bitcoin's gone up from the 3,500 range to 5,200. Um, Ethereum's up from like 115 dollars to like 180 now. Uh, 177 so everything's just going up um, and now it's starting to kind of go sideways at the moment um, we'll see if it's doing a small correction uh, or so somewhere but um, let me touch on this too real quick and I'll, I'll and we'll kind of move into uh, technical analysis so I want to show you guys actually what I'm how, how I trade um, and I do you know eight out of ten times seven out of ten times almost every time uh, and at least six out of ten so I'm always winning more than I am losing, so I'm always making money. Um, so I'm gonna show you a way that I've been doing it. I took one Ethereum out, and I just started trading in the last, I would say, two weeks, um, just to you know, uh, show you guys what I've been doing. You know what I mean? I, I don't wanna uh, you know, go away from my other trading too much, but I wanna show you using Ethereum um, to USD, and we'll kinda go from there. So. Fear and greed index, greed 65 today, greed yesterday 69, last week 60, last month 56. So it's obviously it's on its on its way up right now. Uh, and of course in October, November, everybody was hoping um, that things were gonna be happening in December, January, February, did not happen. And now it looks like it's starting to hopefully go in the direction we want in, in a bull run, which we are obviously in a bull run at the moment, is it? A big one or is it a small one? Don't know. So let's get right into it. Okay, so what I'm showing you here is uh, the Ethereum uh, US that I've been using. Um, and these basically these uh, vertical lines going up and down green are 39 bars, uh, kind of a swing trade time that I like to, to kind of look at. Um, doesn't really mean too much, but you know, it kind of shows me, you know, where my start points are and possible stop points, you know, between that for swing trading, right? Doesn't matter, you know, this is gonna be a way I'm gonna show you, it doesn't matter if you're day trading, swing trading, core trading, or doing macro trading, which is on a yearly basis or more. Um, so let me show you how I do it and, and you know, it doesn't matter what timeline you're using starting off. If you start off on one timeline, just make sure you end up on that timeline and that's pretty much your basis is that timeline. So keep that in mind. Well, I'll put it all together here. So my first trade was on the 27th, right? At eight o'clock. So a lot of people would say, you know, tell me, would ask me, and I would obviously ask myself um, if I was just learning, is how did you know when to buy right there? How did you know, right? Well, I'm always talking about the 20 and the 200 MA, and you, you know, if you want to look up in the you know, the top corner here, um, you can click on that to kind of you know see my other videos about the 20 and the 200 MA. Um, and I've actually honed my skills in the last five six months, and I've gone down to the 10 and the 100 MA. That staves off a lot of my losses and a lot of gains that I feel you know I may be losing out on by waiting it for, to come back down to 20 so on and so forth. So uh, with the 20 and the 200, now is now the 10 and the 100 as my baselines. The red's the 10, the blue's the one, the 100. Um, again, I go off a four hour chart, so it's kind of, a, it's a swing trade, obviously. Um, and when I'm getting into these, um, I'm obviously looking at the MACD. It's one of my, you know, that goes with my four uh, our chart. So if I see this happening and I see it just crossing the red and I think something's going to happen, I, I, so I'm going to sit here and wait um, and you know watch it for the next few hours. The next one turns, it turns green. What happens in that green? It starts, go, it crosses over and it becomes a byline. That's considered a byline. And again, my MACD, I set mine to 10 and 100. Same thing, 10 and 100. Everything's set to the same parameters for the most part. Um, even though it's slap fast, slow, um, convergence, divergence, it works really, really well. It's very easy, very simple, very easy to remember. MACD and the MAs, right? Simple moving averages, simple moving averages. So 
I bought there. So how did so one would ask how did you learn how did you know to buy right there? Okay, so what I did is when I started getting close to something that I want to buy, right? I start looking at it on a closer timeline. Because obviously I want I want getting close to a time that I want to buy. So I want to get down to the nitty gritty. Again, everything's set, same parameters, right? That's pretty much where I bought in at this point, and I bought in at 160. Okay, right at that line. But the line was down here. So my baseline to break even is pretty much right there on the uh, the 10 MA line. That's just an overall, okay? So let's move it. You know, let me get my big head out of the way. So let's move it into, um, oops, just making sure that my head was out of the way. Um, let's get into the five-minute chart. I used the four, the one hour, and then straight into the five-minute chart. And a lot of people are kind of wonder why I do that, but no, it, it'll all come together here in a second. Um, so let me get to my trade here if I can find it. Got a ton of trades that I did. Actually, I only did six trades, so didn't do that many trades. Um, but all right, so there's the trade right there. This is where I figured out where to buy. All right, same parameters, 10 and 100, MACD, 10 and 100. Okay, these are my two strong indicators that I go off of. Everything else accentuates these indicators. If these indicators aren't telling me what I want to know, I don't go to any other indicators. Simplify your trading, okay? Futures markets traders, they simplify it. They look for it, they see a lot of candle language, so on and so forth. It's very, very advanced, right? Well, we're going into simplicities here, taking a lot of the guesswork out, not having to go through 20,000 indicators when you're a beginner, and then you can move forward into other indicators like I have. Um, and I've really honed my skills in, uh, but I just really wanna show you that. Okay, so I started looking at it, which is why I turned it blue here. And as you can see, I bought in right here at I'm sorry, yeah, 133. So on this one was 133. Um, and where did I get that? Okay, so if you look at the MACD, the MACD has been sitting there kissing for a little while, right? That's this five minute chart. So I sit here and watch it at eight o'clock in the morning. I watched it, I watched it. And once it hit there, it broke that red line. If you can't see that bar right there, I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can. It broke that red line. It's just sitting here kissing it. You don't know what it's going to do. The MACD is not telling you anything. And then you move over here and it breaks the red, right? It breaks the red one. So it's up over the red. It's up over the blue, which is your 100. Um, and it's moving in this direction. You don't know it's going to move in this direction at this point. But as you can see, it gapped away, which is considered a buy point. And the next one gapped away from the red and started right here and started going up. Well, once it started going up, I, I go in and, and try to buy. Well, obviously it takes time to get into your you know exchange and buy. Um, and I always use a rule that it has to go up a certain level for me to be comfortable that it's gonna keep going based on the MACD and how far away it is from here. So these two indicators um, and the RSI didn't help me out a lot in a lot of these trades. Uh, sometimes it helps me out when these two things are kind of telling me, and then the RSI will tell me that there's a power play happening. Um, and it didn't help, and the RSI didn't tell me anything until about right here, that it was in a power play. So saying, with that being said, I bought in right here, okay? So now at that point, I bought in. So I'm going back to my four hour chart because that is where I started from. It's as simple as that, you start what chart did you start from is the chart you're going to watch this thing at now. So now, as you can see, that's where I bought it. Equalizing it to the five minute chart. That's where I bought it at 133. So 133, it goes up. Look how far away it breaks the 100 line, right? And this is, I even started watching it right here just to see if I needed to pull out real quick. And I didn't have to. Um, everything was telling me the MACD is getting away from the convergence divergence lines are starting to gap away and it's gapping away from the blue and far away from the red so it's telling me that it's on a run right so i just let it run you know i just watch it every four hours um i, I wouldn't say i watched it but you know what i mean i wouldn't I, I don't really consider watching it until i see it hitting this red line again once it starts hitting this red line again then you start looking at things and going okay all right what's going on 
you know, the, the MACD, it looks like there's a big gap still, so there's not a sell point. Um, it, it Sure, it, it didn't break the red. It's on the red, but it didn't break under the red. So you wait. The, this one turned green. Didn't break up over the red, so you kind of wait. You're waiting for something significant to tell you. Some, you know what I mean? And really learn these SMAs. I mean, the simple moving averages are a lot, you know, as far as waves go, it's a lot smaller on the waves. If you use the uh, exponential moving average, it's a lot sharper on the ways they go. So it's very dramatic um, based on it's taking the exponential moving average from the closing of each candle, not the average of each candle. So it's a little different. So that's why I like the simple moving average. And again, you know, it, it, you know, the trades speak a thousand words. I've just done six trades uh, since the 27th and they're all wins. So, and I'll show you, and this is number one. Uh, as, as I said, it didn't break. It went down, it broke right here. But again, as you can see, it turned green. So I waited, it's still gapped on the MACD, not a buy or sell point yet. So I just held it, I held it. And what happened at this point, I got over pretty much my swing trade time. So, okay, so I'm like, okay, well, I need to, you know, uh, cash out and make some profit. Um, before you get in, you know, you're not looking for home runs here. You're looking for um, your probabilities to stay steady, um, whether it's 70 or 80 percent, you know, even higher if you can. But I, you know, I took mine to about 75 percent um, and I just waited on this. I bought it there. I waited. I waited. I kind of considered that something, you know, weird was happening right here. It's going sideways. I don't like playing these sideways markets um, on coins that go sideways. Um, so I always change to different coins of trade um, that are doing more movement. But point is, this is Ethereum. This, so I stuck with Ethereum. I figured kind of we were in kind of a bull run at this point, and whether it was a short-term bull run or not. So I was going to take my profit. So again, how do you know when to close out? Okay. So again, four hour down to your one hour chart, right? I'm sorry. Every time I change charts, it always does that. So it goes down to the one hour chart. Right, so I saw it on the one hour chart. It's over the blue, it's over the red, it's going up. And I kind of saw it on the red that it was going down. It's on the MACD, it's under. So I should have sold out, right? Somewhere, probably around here, uh, you know, right here. This is where the sellout point was um, on, the, uh, on the MACD. So I sh probably should have sold out right there. But, you know, on my four hour chart, it didn't show me that. It didn't show me that. So at this point is where I'm just telling myself I need to I need to cash out to make some money and just try to make as much money as I can. So there's the one hour chart, right? It's telling me it's over here um, and it might be on uh, on its way either up or down. So I waited. And on that wait, I turned it into the five minute chart. That's the whole point is you want to you want to get down to focusing, magnifying where you want to buy, right? I mean, or where you want to buy and where you want to sell is basically the whole point. So let's get into here. So this is where I really started watching it. And as you can see on the 10 MA, that's where I sold out right there is when it broke the red and it started going down. Let me blow it up a little more so everyone can see. There's the red, right? I started watching it around this play about seven o'clock, seven o'clock at night, and it broke right here. And once it started just dramatically dropping is when I sold out, and I sold that at 141. So 133 to 141, I made an $8 profit per Ethereum, but I only used one Ethereum um, on these trades because this is just something I'm doing for the videos. Uh, so I took one of my mining uh, Ethereum, and this is what I'm doing with it. So... That was the simple trade, all right? You use the five minute, the one hour, and the four hour chart. It's really kind of that simple. You know, if you, if, uh, and it, again, I, I make it look simple because I've done a lot of the work. I understand what some of the candles are saying and when it's the time to look at things. So that's kind of working it on a considered sideways market, but still a bull market, right? We consider it a bull market, so you're gonna play it like a bull market as opposed to not a bull market. So 
Let's move into the next one real quick, all right? I'm gonna do probably three here so you can kind of see where I've ramped up in my advancement um, in doing things here. So um, let me show you uh, how this works with the Fibonacci, okay? And the Fibonacci is basically, again, an accentuator of my 20 or my 10 and my 100 MA now and my 10 and 100 settings for my MACD. So as you can see right here on the MACD, if you can't see it, I'm gonna try and zoom in as much as possible. But down there on the bottom, you can see where that gap happened right in between eight and 12 on the four hour chart. So I'm looking at things and I see this happening. And when I start seeing this kind of consolidation happening, I just sold there, it's been a day or two and I, I kind of see this happening where something's consolidating. You know, that's kind of where I felt, you know, here's is where the feeling, you got to get a feeling for the market as well. Um, I felt something was going to be happening with the consolidation of it, right? So what did I do? I moved into the four hour, to the one hour chart. Of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move in to see what I'm looking at, to see what things are telling me. So once I started seeing this, on the four hour chart, it's, it shows that it's just kind of sitting right here on the, on the red. Well, when I looked up over here, it looked like it broke it. So I started watching it. And once I saw, once I saw this happening between these two, I moved into the five point chart. This is where, this is where I'm, I'm considering on buying. Basically I'm looking for a buy point at this point. So I found one and again, these are all swing trades. So it depends on how you're trading and how you want to, uh, how, how you want, how fast you want to trade, I should say. So this is where I see it on the MACD. You can see it. Um, and basically on the timeline, it's 12 o'clock, right? So that's when I kind of started watching things is around 12 o'clock and maybe even 1130, I would say, I'd say watch it even back here. And it's just kind of sitting here consolidating, consolidating. Um, well, once I saw this, bam, this big push happen. Oh, I didn't miss the bus. You know, once I saw the angle of the MACD, right, is just, I mean, the angle is just, you know, 45, 60 degree angle, you know. And then obviously when you see the red cut through, I'm going to kind of zoom, zoom in a little bit more so you can see what I'm looking at through broke the red line and went up i mean i was trying to buy in here but i couldn't and i didn't get to buy in until about right here which is this white line right here so about 144.50 i believe 144 yeah, 145 so um so i bought in around here so with that buy right the macd is gapping away from the blue and the yellow they're gapping away and it's going up on this angle, which is like a 45 degree, angle. a 45 degree angle on a MACD and like a 60 degree angle on your, you know, or even more. Um, and a 60 degree angle on your 10 and 100s are starting to go up. That's a power play. It's considered a power play. So I, I played it like a power play in a bull run. You got to categorize how you're trading and what type of style you're trading in. Again, this is the five minute chart. So with the five minute chart. I bought in right there, so I'm going to zoom back out to my, let's go to the four hour because that's, that's what I ran off of, right, when I initially started this trade. When I initially started, I was looking at the four hour chart. So let's go in and see exactly where I bought in on the four hour chart because every line that I do, even on the five minute chart or the one hour chart, it goes, it, it, it still transfers to the four hour charts, uh, to any chart. So. So zooming in as much as I, as far as I can, as you can see, it broke. And then that's where I bought in about, I don't know, third to halfway in, $445. Again, big gap. It's on a power play. Everything's on a up, you know, baseline blue. It's kind of a baseline because it's going flat. This one's going up. This is all going up. That's considered a power play. And I'll, cons I'll tell you why I put this Fibonacci in here in a second. But I want to get into where I sold out in this um, trade. So right there is where I sold out. Okay. Oh, actually I didn't write, it was right here, but it was considered that 
um, price. So that's why I put it there. Uh, 166. So 145 to 166, I made a $21 um, profit on that. Buy, selling out, I would say, it wasn't right there. It was actually right here. So yeah, somewhere in this uh, little candle wick on the bottom here is where I sold out. Um, sorry, no, I sold out in the green here just to get out. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do. It did a nice big wave and I didn't know where we was going at that point. Um, even though it was indicating, but I bought out, I sold out anyways, um, just, uh, based on how much money I made at that point. So $21. Um, and I, for just one Ethereum, um, I cashed out right there. Now, what the Fibonacci helps me out with is when you trace a Fibonacci and you start here, you trace it down to where the uh, wave started, right? Okay, so there, there's your basically real quick on a four hour chart um, between, I believe, 24 hours, if not 36. It's showing me that there's the start and there's the end point of the first wave. And where is it going to go from here? Well, that's not what it that's not what Fibonacci does. What it's telling you is relative cousin numbers, right? If you understand Fibonacci, all right, the relative numbers. And what happens is, is that this retraces back down to to under have the halfway mark, right? Well, all that new money that came in in this wave is gone. It, it's gone. I mean, it's as simple as that. It, it's gone because they ate it up. And this is basically what happened is what they tried to basically eat it up right here. And it went, even went down to 382, this wick, as you can see. Um, and then it went back up and really kind of luckily didn't close down under the, that halfway point. Again, if you go under that halfway point, that's considered all this new money is gone. It's all new money that's been eaten up by, you know, everybody that's just salivating for, you know, profit. So kind of the same thing I did because I'm not, you know, I'm greedy too, just like everybody else on the market. You come up, $21 I made from 145 to 166 So it was a great trade, you know, and that's how cutthroat the markets are. Nobody waits and nobody's waiting for the precipice to try and make the most money. They're trying to make money that is the easiest money to make. And if you keep doing trades like this, then it works out really great. Now, I wanna show you where I change things up, all right? Now, as you know, I always start with the four hour, the one hour, and then down to the five minute. Um, and this trade right here, I was actually looking at a one hour chart. Uh, and this is where you see a little bit more, of my technique has been kind of honed um, based on this. So. You know, I sold out here and I made money. That's why I turned it green. And then up here is when it broke, right? It broke right here. So the one hour chart was telling me that, hey, you know, that could have been a good, that could be a, a time to buy. But the MACD was not telling me that. It was telling me something different. Now, how did I get into this buy right here, right? Okay, it's a little bit more sketchy. But I did it anyway because I wanted to show if the probabilities, rounder probability wise, that it could work and it worked. More times than not, it's going to work if uh, you do it. Now, you're going to have a little bit more probability that it's not going to work, but that's where you use other indicators at um, on this. So, again, down in the five minute chart, this is where I saw um, a spot. For some reason, this is where I chose to buy in. I, I saw that. I saw the correction that came down, and I pretty much bought in um, right there, which is about halfway in the green here, right? Because it broke the red. It's over the blue, um, and it's gapped. You know what I mean? It's already on the sell point, and it gapped away again from the MACD. So I bought in right there. Now, a lot of people will be scared and go, oh, no, you should have sold down here. Well, again, you got to remember that the 100 is a kind of a baseline. Um, what do you call that? Uh, a ceiling, you know, a resistance line and a support line. So it'll, you know, it'll, res it'll support at this point. And if it breaks, then you're going down. I mean, and then it's considered down on a downtrend. But it's still on an uptrend as long as it's over this 100. So 
there's a lot of little mixtures here. And again, I, you know, I mine Ethereum. I'm very intimate with Ethereum. So I understand how Ethereum kind of works um, in a roundabout way fundamentally. So this is, again, this is all technical analysis, but you got to throw your probabilities in there for your fundamental analysis, sentiment, so on and so forth. So sentiment analysis was really good. Um, I didn't really get scared until this was happening. Obviously, if you can see it right here by the blue uh, line, that wick right here on this. Um, and it was down here on the gap. But when I bought it, it was over. Um, it was over the MACD line. So I bought it there, right? So I went back to my hour chart because that's the one I started in. That's when I bought it. Or that's when I considered buying it was looking at the one hour chart. So looking at the one hour chart. I saw this happening, right? I bought it, it went red, it went down here, okay? I was hoping it didn't break that where I had a stop loss put in um, on that. So it, it did not. It went back up, it stayed over. There's a, uh, that's basically where I bought it at. It was like 171. And then I sold it at like 176. Somewhere in this red line right here is where I sold it. And how did I get to that? You don't really see anything in the one hour chart. But when you get to the five minute, it'll show you where I basically put in my my little drawings so I apologize but this is just kinda how it works with you know you're using trading view or even coinage free you know it's just it's just what you gotta deal with when you're on free you can only have so many indicators up so on and so forth working with free um, so this is where I sold out right here um, it went, it broke the red down here. I was starting to look at it right here, obviously, and I saw it turn red. It didn't break the red. If you can't see the red line, there it is. Um, it didn't break the red. It didn't break the red. And it finally broke the red right here and stayed under the red. And that's where I pretty much sold out. Was that like 176.50, 177, something around there. Um, so uh, that is a 171 to 176, let's say. That's five dollar uh, profit on that. So I've made three trades uh, in the span of I would say a week, um, and I'm um, you know I'm up like thirty five I think thirty five dollars or something, uh, if not more, uh, forty three I think. So that's what happened. Okay, on those trades. So I went back to my four hour chart. Now that I sold out, I'm not holding anything anymore. I'm not trading anything. So I'm looking for a new buy in point. And of course, when I sold out here, this is what it looked like on my four hour chart. Yeah, sorry. And so this is where it looks like and then it gone down. So I'm not ready to buy in yet. Nothing's telling me to buy in. And that's where I bought in right there. Now, a lot of people would say, how did you know that? Right? I believe on this one too, I was looking at my one hour chart. So yeah, I was looking at my one hour chart on this one. So what you start out on is what you want to end up on to consider when you want to start selling out or when you want to start on to sell out. You start with this one and when you want to start learn, uh, wanting to sell out, you want to start looking at things. So this is where I saw this happen. It, it corrected back down to the red turn green and just boom it just shot up and made this macd on a sell point this again this is a one hour chart right that i started with on that sell on that buy and sell so that's what we're going to go off of on this one so down at the five minute chart because i saw that you know it was it corrected at um, my one hour chart on the red line um and then this is basically what i did on this buy. So I saw that basically happening, right? I waited until it kind of corrected back. This line right here showed me to keep looking at everything because it's on a power move. The 100 blue line is on a power play. This is all on an upswing. So, and we're in a bull run. I mean, all these indicators, you know, just, just logical things that are happening are telling you and bringing your probabilities up. And right there, which is what this line is for, is where I bought in right there in that green line or on this green bar that's shooting up, okay? 
160 is what I bought it at on the five minute chart. So then I go back to the one minute, one hour chart, because again, that's what I started out with. So let's go back to the one hour chart. And that's where it shows me where I bought in. Um, so from my five minute chart, it transferred these bubbles over and that's where I bought in. And I'm just kind of saying that, you know, on the, and this is where the actual 10 line was when I, when I bought it. So I, to break even, the 10 line really has to come up to here for me to break even. And it absolutely did. It stayed going up on an upward trend. This is going up. These are going up and it's gapping away very, very well on the MACD. I mean, it all tells me very, very simply, this is a power play. So it's going to do at least one wave. At, and it did. It went waved up, came back down. It kind of just, stuck. it didn't break. It just, it, 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 it crossed the red but it didn't break oh you know completely over or under the red so it's kissing it it's touching it it's touching it, it's touching it, it's touching it's touching it's still touching and it's green it's touching it went way up it turned red which is not a good sign turned red turned red and why did i know when to buy in here right or or sell out here well it crossed over my line again my swing trade line um, it started going sideways again. I don't like playing these sideways markets. The uh, 10's going sideways. The 100 blue line is starting to kind of level out. And this is telling me to sell, as you can see, the MACD. So that gives me more probability to tell me that it's about time to start selling out, right? So I went into my five minute one, very, very easy. It's just constantly doing the same thing over and over and over again, just making sure that when you're uh, selling out and buying in, it's when you want to do it, right? So again, it's, it's over by my green line here. It passed over my green line. Um, it's way down underneath. Uh, and where did it tell me that I, I sold out at? Uh, I believe I sold out, yep, right here. So it went down here. It, and this is kind of where I was looking at it, about 9 o'clock in the morning. And right when it broke down right here is when I sold out. So I sold out down here uh, on this red bar. Uh, down low on this red bar, but I sold out. So it was like 164, you know, 160, I believe, to 164, 165. Um, so I made about a 4 or $5 profit on that one Ethereum based on that trading um, of five-minute chart from a one-hour chart, right? Starting with the one-hour chart. So, again... That started with the one hour chart and I sold out about 164, 165 ish. And then I got back in right here. And this, you know, just going right off of the one hour chart. Let's start with the four hour chart. Let's just see if I even started this one on the four hour chart. I don't think I did, but I will. Yeah, I didn't. So this one was the one hour chart right after this one. Yeah. So this one right here was the one hour chart. I started this one on the one hour chart. The 10 and the 100 were getting close to each other, but it didn't kiss and it didn't cross down underneath, which kind of tells you that there's a downtrend going on. Uh, again, you know, starting hope, you know, possibly more possible than not on the probability scale. Everything you do on the trading is all about probabilities. So as you can see on the MACD underneath, it crossed over right here, crossed over and then it gapped. Well, when I started seeing it went under the went under the hundred, turned green, turned green, broke the hundred up, broke the red, but turned red is when I started looking at it. So at twenty one hundred on oh six, and that's when I started going down to my five minute chart at twenty one hundred on oh six. Oh, it's this one right here. So. So 2100, let's zoom in a little more. You guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, 2100, yeah, so about 2100 is when I started looking at it. And it went up, it went up, wasn't telling me that it was time to buy yet. It went down underneath, so it's telling me to watch it now. Okay, watch it, watch it, right? Wait for it to break over that red, because it's, you know, this is a support line, it's going flat. So it's now a strong resistance support line and it has a magnetic effect to negatively push it or positively bring it back. At this point, 
it looks like it's negatively pushing it away from the blue. So it broke that red line. Can't see it. I'll kind of move in a little bit more. So broke that red line, right? And right when it came up about there, and that's when I bought in about 164, uh, 165. I bought back in. Uh, and as you can see, it was a, it, it basically touched. Right when it touched is when basically I bought in. And that's basically when I bought in, probably about right here. It was about 164.50, yeah. It was on the next, it was on the next one. I do know that. So it had to be, yeah, 164.50 around there. So about third to a halfway into that candle. And that's when I saw it break. So when it breaks into a buy point, I, I stayed it into a buy point. This is going flat. Um, and this is on, looks like it's on a small way up. So I put a stop point in, obviously, a stop loss point. Um, and your stop loss wants to be at least a one to two or two to four. I mean, it doesn't matter, but at least it's a one to two uh, ratio on your loss to win ratio. $1 to $2 win. $1 loss to $2 win. You'll win every time. That's the casino's edge. And again, I have videos on that too to kind of show you the probabilities, how the casinos play, how stock traders, uh, professional stock traders trade it, um, and so forth. So again, so I bought in right there on the five-minute chart. Let's go back to the one hour since that's the one I started with on this trade, right? So on this trade, I'm back to the one hour. This is, again, one of those specialty ones that kind of tell me that I've honed my skills a little bit more. So I bought in right there. It went up, right? Every every hour it's gone up. It's kind of watching this on a daily on the day. Um, and it kind of hit this precipice right here. Uh, and it was really gapped away from the MACD. And once I kind of saw it starting to go back down, because I mean look look at that big wave up behind it, and then it gapped in front of it, and about right there is when I started looking at it. I kind of thought that, that was the end of the wave at that point and you know it's around 170 and I think I bought in like 164 right so 164 165 something of the sort um, so on that trade right and I turn it green because that's when I get paid my profit so that's basically when I sold out so I started watching it right about right here and it went back up so I, I kind of stuck with it and once it broke, right, it's kind of riding on the red. And the next one turned red, you know, down, starting here. And we just started going down. So I sold out at 169, about 169 something. So I made about a four, 450 profit, $5 profit on, <coughs> excuse me, on that. So um, I believe that's like $48 that I'm up now, right? $48 that I'm up. And now this last one that just happened last night, right? I'm looking at things and this was actually, I believe a four hour chart that I was looking at on this one. So uh, let's move over and let's look on that one. Yep, so I started out on the four hour chart. So that's when I sold out last, all right? Came back down and corrected at the red. It's far away from the 100, but the 100 is on its way up to come and meet it. So either the candle's got to come down to the 100 or the 100 has to come up to meet the candles. Well, one of the two or both, right? Or a little mix of both. So right here, it turned red. It didn't break it. It turned right on the, the 10 MA. It turned green and started going back up on a four-hour chart. So then I moved in. And this is what I saw. This one was green. And it was going up. So I moved in. I said, okay, it it's, looks like it is definitely on a buy point. So when I moved into my five minute chart, I started, I was looking at it about three o'clock. I waited, I waited, I waited. And then once it turned green right here, right at four o'clock, it pushed up. And that's when I bought in right here at 170. I bought it at 170 because this is already gapped away. It was already on a on a way up. It's an angle going up about 20, 30 degrees, but it's a nice probability angle that tells me that it's going to keep going up. It didn't kiss. This is on its way up. This is flattened on its way up. 
So it's it's just giving me these indicators just straight out the bat that it's bringing me up to about 70% on this trade, right? Once it gapped away that much, it's even brought me up to about 75%, and that's when I bought in. So I bought in at 170 just based on what the market looks like, what these indicators are telling me, right? I mean, that's kind of scary when you see this and then, you know, you don't know if it's going to turn and, you know, MACD and show you a sell point. Um, but what it actually did is if you really, really zoom in, you can actually zoom in pretty, pretty darn close to this um, price. That's what it did. So I saw it going up, starting green right here, right? And it goes up from here. So starting green, the angle went up. And once I saw that angle started going up, Right in the right in the middle of this candle, and it's only a five minute candle, is when I bought in pretty much at the end of this candle because I wanted to ensure that that angle was gapping away between the convergence divergence line. It was gapping more of a gap between them. Okay, learn how to read stuff um, to your style of of trading. This is a universal style of trading. You can do this with any coin, with any timeline, and uh, swing trade, core trade, day trade. Uh, it's just, you know, I'm doing this starting with swing trades and core trades to, to hone my skill and then I can get more into day trades to really just up my wins, right? So that's what I did when I bought it, okay? That's what I did when I bought it. So let's go back to the four-hour chart because this is going to tell you basically how I did it. So now you can see where I actually bought it was in between these two candles of the four-hour candles um bam right there so this one started taking off away so i don't need to really look at things really hardly i just kind of look at things from from an overview point every four hours so i saw this one boom this one's going up right big gap big gap and it started leveling off once i kind of started seeing this level off right here it's still kind of telling me that it's on a power play move it really is it's really telling me that it's on a power play move um, but I, but I kind of like the, uh, the profit that I made right here. So when I started looking at it, when at what, April 8th at 12 o'clock and this is Hong Kong time. So I went down to my five minute chart, just quick five minute right into it. And yeah, so at 12 o'clock is when I started watching it, which was kind of around this area. Um, I stuck with it. As you can see, it was already under the MACD when I started watching it. So I waited for it to kind of go over the MACD. It didn't really gap out and it went under the red. So I kind of stuck with it. You know, I, I stuck with it. I stuck with it um, because it's still kind of on that sell point. Um, and then right here is when I kind of just said, okay, that's, that's, I'm, I'm done. Uh, I, I'm, I'm done. I, I don't need to, to, to buy anymore or wait for this to happen anymore. So I waited, um, and about right here is when I, I bought out. So yeah, 180, I bought out about right here. Uh, right when I crossed, um, yeah, oh, actually it was right here. Yeah. So yeah, it was five fifteen ten. Yeah. Once this broke. And it started going down really dramatically away from this red line and it's already under the blue line. I just didn't even want to play this game. So I sold out right here. So at 180. So from this profit of 170 to 180, made 10 bucks right there. So all in all, I made six trades total um, throughout, I believe, a week and a half, 10 days, 12 days. Um, and, um, you know, it's only one Ethereum, you know, because, again, this is Ethereum to USD. Um, and it would have been, um, uh, or it was, I should say 55 plus 65 bucks. So basically I made 65 bucks with one Ethereum. Think of that if you're doing Bitcoin, think of that if you're doing five Ethereum, think if you're doing the 10 Ethereum, you know what I mean? Then you're making good money, um, in a 10 day span. You know what I mean? Just think you're doing 10 Ethereum. Uh, and I made 55 bucks sometimes since $550 you made in 10, 12 days um, on a low price coin. So, um, again, I mine Ethereum. So that's why I use Ethereum. I don't, you know, trade my Bitcoin. I just add my to my stack of Bitcoin and let Bitcoin rise uh, from there. So that's pretty much it that I wanted to go over. I did kind of want to show you how I did things and so on and so forth. This yellow bubble was basically me saying, OK, if it goes back down 
to 180, then I'm out. And that's basically what happened is once it started going back down, once it hit the 180 line, I, I basically just bought it. I sold out. So that's basically what happened. And then I, I was hoping to buy in somewhere around this place, but no, it didn't. It didn't happen. So, um, so that's where I made my money was basically at the 180 level. Uh, so $55 for one Ethereum over 10, 12 days. Not a bad strategy, I should say. It was only six trades that I did. And again, I used the four-hour chart and the one-hour chart for my swing trades. So uh, they work out really, really well. Work out really, really well. And everyone's afraid to change from hour chart to four-hour chart to one-hour chart to five-minute chart. It's actually necessary if you want to trade using this type of style. And if anybody needs any help uh, learning how to do it and so on and so forth, just let me know. And uh, I will help you guys out as best as I can. So my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. Oh, it's my channel and uh, the dogs I'm going to rescue. You guys keep up the grind.